Welcome back. I am so excited to introduce you to our next guest, a longtime friend and just amazing person. I know you're going to love her as much as I do. Aggie Cobrin is the creator of the new E360 network, which is a new broadcast network. Mm -hmm. And we would love to know, Aggie, what does it take to actually start a TV network? A lot more than I imagined. <laughs> I, I a can't whole even lot more than I imagined. That, Aggie. I it's just it's amazing. True. You know, it started as a little idea, and mm -hmm. it started with, um, I think, one of your previous guests may have talked about cannabis and what's going on in the cannabis mm -hmm. world. It started almost anticipating being a cannabis broadcast network mm, because wow. there was such a big audience out there for mm -hmm. there for that and I got invited into a network and um, kind of explored the idea of working with them on on production mm -hmm. and a lot of that had to do with medical marijuana on treating autism on treating health issues mm -hmm. on things wow. like that mm -hmm. and that kind of swayed and turned into an actual broadcast network mm -hmm. so we now have about 300 pieces of content I'll tell you a little bit about what it took to get that but about 300 pieces of content um, coded set up on on broadcast TV and I'll mm -hmm. tell you about uh, the networks and about 500 others that are in, in process right now. So we're talking about 800 to 1,000 pieces of content, and they vary from five or 10 minutes to hours. Mm -hmm. Um, because the broadcast world is totally different now. You guys are familiar with mm -hmm. that. It's no longer the standard stations and the 30 minute or the 60 mm -hmm. minute shows. It's essentially almost anything that you can broadcast out there through some, some medium. And in our case, it's Roku and it's Apple TV and it's um, several other devices like that, Amazon, Amazon mm -hmm. Fire, mm -hmm. Fire Stick. And then it's, you know, the television set and the uh, laptops and your, your phones and everything else. The, the medium has changed a great deal. And OTT, which used to stand for those devices like the Amazon Fire and, and Fire Sticks and things, um, it's all different now. And nobody, nobody under a certain age, we won't talk about age here, but nobody <laughs> under a certain age watches it Monday at 8 o'clock because that's when the show is on anymore. Right. They watch whenever they want, whatever they want, wherever they are. That's right. So that whole way of, of modeling shows is very, very different. So we went about it saying, okay, we want to launch this broadcast network. We need a certain amount of money. We raised money in a couple different ways. One was some investment. Okay. The other was crowdfunding, which mm -hmm. I did a lot of in the past, but we actually raised about sixty, seventy thousand dollars crowdfunding to start E360 TV. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, we started to pull in shows, and that's really my responsibility, so don't ask me any technical questions. Okay. Because <laughs> the technical stuff is, is okay, somebody else. I wouldn't get into that. No, anyway. no yeah. you don't want to get into that. <laughs> but what you do is you have to be able to broadcast on those networks, and there's a lot involved in that. It, it's not just here we are and we have this great show. Mm -hmm. It's permission, it's authorization, it's coding, it's meta tagging, mm -hmm. it's listing all this stuff, and it's spending money. Mm -hmm. um, average is probably about fifty thousand dollars to get onto some of those broadcast channels mm -hmm. for a show. For no, for a channel. Oh, for a channel. We're a channel. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're a channel. Okay. So we are looking for shows. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to talk to you guys about that. Ah, we, are, yeah. that. We, we are looking for shows. We're always looking mm -hmm. for shows. Um, so we have several networks now as part of the channel. Okay. We, we have the cannabis, which is a really important part of it. A lot of it's related to medical, what's going on, what the world and the public knows, what they don't know. Um, we've got talk shows, we've got several talk shows, we've got cooking shows, we've got travel shows, yeah. we've got extreme sports shows, so it's now a full broadcast network. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. Unbelievable. Really How cool. much time has it taken to get it to, from point A to where you are now? About a year. Okay. We started just over a year ago. Last December, basically, mm -hmm. um, was when it started. There's a lot of people involved. I'm just one of many, but I've been pulling in a lot of the content. Mm -hmm. um, there's about six or eight people involved and other peripherals to that. A lot of technical stuff. And you have to know what you're doing. The technical stuff is the most difficult. Mm -hmm. Getting the content, as far as I'm concerned, is probably one of the easiest mm -hmm. things. But we review every piece of content. We have to code it. We have to meta tag it. We have to set it up. Uh, we have to make it so that it will work when you click on your phone or click on your, your Roku device. Right. And by the way, we had 250,000 views this month, which is real exciting, and I'll tell you how You're we did that. You're not even actual that yet, are we're, you? We're in a soft launch, and we had 250,000 wow. viewers this month, yeah. So, so it's incredible what you can do with the right social media. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's also a lot of really interesting facets to how all of this works. So it's not just putting it up there. It's you got to put it up there and you have to get people to watch it. Right. Mm -hmm. And lots and lots of channels are out there and people keep saying, you know, you're competing with so much. Well, the reality is so much really hasn't got a clue what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And they create, but they don't know what to do with it. That's right. And that's where we come in. We actually are broadcasting. We're actually getting out to an audience. We hope in the next three months to reach over a million people. Mm. And I think we will. 
And then we start to be able to sell advertising and sponsorships. We're doing that already, but we're going to do more and more of that. So at this so. point, if I, so I have Roku. Mm -hmm. And if I go on to Roku and I want to add you as a network to my Roku list, I should be able to find you. E3 will find us. E3, it's E360 TV. Mm -hmm. You'll find us. And Roku is our biggest audience. Wow. That fascinated me. There are more Roku devices in, in the world or in North America than anything else. Really? So, really. And I did not know that. About 60% wow. of our audience comes from Roku. And I had no idea that that was the most popular of the OTT devices. I thought, you know, for sure Apple or Amazon, and, and that's not the case. Well, it's just that Apple and Amazon basically entered the market so much later, and, mm -hmm. and I think people really are embedded in their device. Although, I mean, I've been going through this currently, do I want to switch to Apple? because then I can sync my computer and I can basically mm -hmm. use my television as a computer monitor, mm. which is, and I'm not the geeky girl. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, the, I'm not the early adopter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it takes me a while to figure it out, but when I moved out here, I knew I didn't want television, and so I just said, oh, for 85 bucks, I can buy a Roku box and watch movies. Yeah. That was really all I wanted to do. Are you watching them on your computer, though? Uh, both. I okay. can watch it on my computer or I can watch it on my TV. Okay. Um, we got a smart TV about this size mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago and didn't realize it was a, a Roku TV. Mm -hmm. okay. So when we turned it on, we actually went straight into all of those. Roku was the first one and then several others before we could get to our actual channels. Oh, yeah. interesting. Which was interesting because we had to figure out how to bypass all that. That is interesting. Um, and that's what a lot of the TVs are now. You're mm -hmm. buying TVs that are manufactured to actually um, show showcase those channels. Yeah, no, my TV must be five years old and it's ancient already. Mm -hmm. It's oh, yeah. ridiculous. It's, it's literally just a monitor. It's amazing what, the, what technology they have have out there like ours is you know you can go to uh, Hulu, Roku, mm -hmm. Amazon and a number You get the whole set across mm -hmm. the, the screen oh, now and you right. just click through and go oh, yeah, whatever you want. Do that. The newer mm -hmm. ones probably the last two or three years they almost all do that mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and and the Roku, Roku's been really interesting because it is it is out there oldest one out there right. um, most most purchased which is fascinating to me mm -hmm. but they've really clamped down because Roku was known for taking anything mm -hmm. and when we first started looking at where we wanted to go we knew that was one of them because of the mm -hmm. audience size mm -hmm. uh, but we were kind of concerned because like the old network I was involved in with wasn't very good was on Roku and so I started to question it a little bit and they said this is the year that Roku's making the drastic changes you now have to fit into the right formats they're changing their back-end systems you have to meta tag things you have to line things up properly you have to be of a certain caliber mm. that was never the case with Roku before so you got a lot of garbage on there yeah mm. that's going to disappear this year okay. oh, 2018 really is when they're going to start to be a lot more and careful. so then is your network an additional pay for play on the Roku network it's free right now mm -hmm. um, it's a free model the intention is once we get enough of an audience yes we might charge for it we okay. might not we will charge for pay-per-view though um, for concerts for sporting events mm -hmm. for things like that um, we've already been invited to, to to film and live stream some concerts we just can't do it yet you know mm -hmm. it's still a little bit above our capabilities mm -hmm. but that's where you can make money you charge two dollars a piece you get a hundred thousand people or two hundred thousand mm -hmm. fights do it all the time concerts do that's it right. some um, so, so we've been invited by a group to do that, and we probably will at some point towards the end of 2018. Got it. So how are you making money currently? That's an interesting question. Um, we're, we're doing our own productions. In fact, I was on a phone call on the way here with one of those productions, and what we do is we set it up and we market it for them, and mm -hmm. we bring them an audience. So. We'll, we, we've got the structure now because we've mm -hmm. done it a number of times to actually put the show together. We've got a production team, a studio that we use in Los Angeles and West mm -hmm. Hollywood, distribution, and now we're getting the marketing and the social media together. No, oh, so that's amazing. It's really yeah. so much. Yeah. To it do. is amazing. It's just a yeah. seamless, a seamless operation. It's for a you seamless guys. operation, but we're we're we're, we're not quite seamless yet. We're, work, <laughs> we're working on it. Well, a lot of people think at this point, with the level of technology that's available, that you just turn on a camera and shoot. And then you can upload it and air and they do and, and they do mm -hmm. what what's YouTube? That's right. all mm -hmm. content exactly. that people produce. But look at the quality. You get great stuff on there. Mm -hmm. You get terrible stuff on there. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just user content. You know, it's whatever people mm -hmm. put up there. Um, the one thing we've been really picky about is the, is the quality, mm -hmm. and we've had to be. So th there's there's a level above which it has to be. Mm -hmm. um, we've taken a few pieces that were we were given actual content from entire broadcast networks. Wow. So the reason we were able to to fulfill our, our you know fill everything up so quickly 
um, wasn't because we we're getting one and two and three shows here and there. Mm -hmm. It's because we got broadcast networks that could not figure out how to market, mm -hmm. that could not figure out how to get their material out there, that had some great content, mm -hmm. didn't know what to do with it. They couldn't monetize it. And mm -hmm. people spend thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars on projects. They complete them and then they have nowhere to put them. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of become a source of that. And if it's good enough, we'll take it. And then again, we want as much content as we can get because mm -hmm. we're an entire network. So we need a lot of content, and we need to refresh mm. that content every month. We need to add to it. Mm. That's so amazing. It's an ongoing process. What an, oh, this what is an amazing such, business. Oh, it is. Model I, proposition. I'm thinking about as I'm thinking about it. I'm feeling like my head explode and steam <laughs> come out of my ears, and like I just like it's uh, unbelievable to think of all of the, the different pieces that yeah. have to go into creating a really great show. Like we think our show is really awesome, and we consistently you're thinking about like what can we do to make it better and more interesting mm -hmm. and get it out to more people mm -hmm. and and so we are living that you know you were you mentioned that there's a lot of great content out there and sometimes people don't know what to do mm -hmm. we're right in the middle of yeah. that you like, are you are and you've got your target audience right mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and that doesn't take away from what we're doing you'll still have your target mm -hmm. audience mm -hmm. right here but what we can do is we can take your show and put it into a much um, a, a much bigger place you know it, mm -hmm. the reality is we we had 250,000 visitors in pre-launch this month because we're really good at the social media part of it mm -hmm. we have a group that's working with us on that um, I won't tell you they stayed on for a long time because we're still cultivating all of that yeah. so a lot of them stayed on for five minutes ten minutes some mm -hmm. for okay. half an hour yeah. um, you know they're looking around right now we mm -hmm. had some that stayed on for hours because they'd find something they wanted or, or a film mm -hmm. or a project on there a product mm -hmm. on there but it's still, you know, it's a learning process for all of us right now. We're producing three shows, mm -hmm. um, probably four, which are our own productions. And, and it was interesting. Somebody said last night, um, commented that you need one hit. Essentially, we need one that really makes it big that'll bring everybody to the channel. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's sort true. of what you look for. Mm -hmm. um, one, two of the shows we're in production with, or will be fairly soon, are, are cannabis related. One mm. is related to autism and the other to Alzheimer's. Mm. And these are major projects. These are you know hour long, two hour long projects that will really explain from the medical perspective what's going on. That's super interesting. It's interesting and it's scary that the information isn't out there anywhere yeah. else. Um, what I learned, and I haven't been directly involved in the projects yet, but what I've been learning is, is there's so many things happening um, in that arena. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they show example after, example after a child who, who had autism. Mm -hmm. um, that was, I'm not going to call it cured because it's not cured, but treated with cannabis, mm -hmm. um, medical marijuana, what, whatever, you know, whatever it was, um, hemp, there's different, there's different things they're treated with. Okay. And they are 90% back. You know, the, the families Amazing. who had these kids who, who were totally uncontrollable, didn't know what to do, couldn't put them in school systems. And then you're seeing this picture of them six months later sitting in a classroom or three months later, sitting in a classroom completely engaged in what's going on. And you can't imagine it's the same, it's the same child and wow. it's the same child. that's amazing. Yeah, so imagine those parents that have been dealing with this and nobody's ever told them that there are ways to mm. treat. Um, Alzheimer's is another one too where there's been incredible results. Mm. And you don't hear about that or see it until you start looking around. Mm -hmm. And these are projects that came to us that said, we really want to put this together. We've got some funding. Mm -hmm. We need a distribution outlet. We need somebody to showcase this and show what can be done. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So how can our viewers find you? I mean, It sounds like you are hitting a lot of things that were really interesting yeah. to our market. Um, right now, um, E360 TV. Mm -hmm. So if you have Roku, you go to E360 TV. If you have Apple, if you have Amazon Fire, um, we're going to be on three or four other devices over the mm -hmm. next few months. Okay. Go to your computer. The difference is on a computer, it looks different. Mm -hmm. So the preference is to go to an OTT device if you can. It just presents better. Mm -hmm. But it presents on your phone. It presents on your computer um, anywhere what, you want to What kind look. of URL do you go to if you're just looking around for, on your phone? E360TV.com. Your... Okay. okay. Yeah, E360TV. Okay. We'll put it up on the screen. We will. We'll please send our viewers there. And please do. We'll add to your 250, and we'll see you at a million. <laughs> <laughs> and, and hopefully so you'll much. be on it. Hopefully uh, we hope that so would too. be even better. So we'll look forward to seeing you again there Thank you. and we'll be right back. <laughs>